talk about unprecedented, I must say. We officially have a season where a returning player mixed in with new players and they don't make it to the end. They make it to the last episode, but of course that's not the same thing. And then we have somebody win the show after previously being voted out and having the amount of time they were not in the game proper be longer than the time that they were. And it's not even close, either. Well, who could have predicted this? I mean, like, yeah, I did sort of predict correctly who would, um, get back in, but that was when I took the jury and whittled it down by half. When I whittled it down to one, obviously I was wrong and that Aurora didn't make it, but she almost made it. And who knows, maybe that would have been better, I don't know. Hmm. I'm not gonna talk about Edge of Extinction twist just yet. Um, so Chris gets back into the game, and then as it turns out, he was also given a, um, hidden immunity idol to, that would come into power the tribal after he was in there. Well, the argument is Rick got it, and uh, Chris did it, that's unfair, true, but then the argument also becomes, what if there were too many idols at the time? Uh, odds are producers were just hoping that idols would have been played by that point, but up until this episode... No, well, no, 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 up until now, enough idols have been voted out of the game that the thing, um... Reshuffle, duh. Enough of them got, uh, down into that with God, and as it, uh, t and I think that we have the rules established where if there's three idols going into the merge, one gets played, you don't do anything, but if it gets down to one idol, you keep it at two. But then it seems like in addition to that, if... Those two idols get played to go down to one, but we have yet to see that, just like how unfortunately we didn't get to see how they would have re-hidden Aubrey's idol after she was voted out, because do you hide it on Manu, where she was actually voted out, or do you hide it on Kama, where she found it in the first place? Because it's even more complicated due to the fact that Lorne, who found the Manu idol, wasn't on either of those beaches. It's just crazy what you do in that situation, and they definitely aren't going to tell us that, because if they tell you, it just clues you in. Nah. Hmm. Right. And then we get uh, Chris and Rick taking control of the game due to the advantages, and I'll admit that was amusing, but really only for Rick's facial reactions, and that's it, and... Lauren think, or Julie thinking, well, there was enough idols play that there should be this amount. Uh, do you not watch the past seasons? Because, do you not recall that, like, in, say, Heroes vs. Villains, the first time that we had two idols played at one tribal council? Those are the only two idols in the game, and you want to know how many they we hit after that? Numero uno! Hopefully I said that right. <laughs> Come on, think, all right? I mean, like, it's you're bound to forget a few things out there, but... I don't know, that kind of forgettingness... That gets to ya. All right. So then, um, uh, Victoria, um, going... I don't totally blame, um, I believe it was Chris and, uh, Lauren going for that angle because they assessed that Julie isn't a, uh, threat to win the game. Can't do anything about Rick because, you know, he played that idol for himself and they, you know, needed a, a backup plan. Can't turn on each other because that defeats the purpose of a backup plan, so it's Victoria or Gavin and... 
Gavin does have the better shot at beating Rick, because Victoria never won anything, though she actually did decent for someone of her stature. Like, you cannot say that there were, was anyone who was really bad at the challenges. Like, even Lauren, who passed out, she had a nice showing in a few of them early on. Later on, not even close, but there you are. And then um, the guy is getting rid of Lauren at the next Tribal Council. Julie isn't a threat to win. Lauren, arguably she was, because there's the same argument. Lauren has old Manu members, although she pissed him off. Julie has the old Karma members, but her resume stinks. Who do you go for? It's not exactly the easiest decision. It's not. Though I could tell, even before this episode started, that Julie had no shot of winning this game. Even with all of her old allies on the jury, because literally every single one of them was. Okay, um... That's Final Four Challenge. Nice, um... Challenge. Chris winning... Not the biggest surprise, if you ask me. And then we get what Dominic didn't have the guts to do, and that he actually gives up his immunity at the Final Four to go against Rick, and then even more amazing, he actually beats Rick in the closest fire-making challenge that we've had since Stephanie and Bobby John did it in Palau, because that's literally the closest one that we've ever had. Every other challenge, it's always been... Everybody gets a little bit of smoke, both of them lose it, and then suddenly one person, zing, gets up to 100%. That's literally how it's been every time since then, I think. This time, Rick's fire, he had a good fire, but Chris got a good fire long before he did. It's literally that simple. But here's the beauty of this situation. Even if this had been a normal vote-out, Rick would have gone anyway. He just didn't go the way we expected him to. So while it is a bummer to um, not see how the jury would have reacted to him, because as it turns out, if he had made it, he would have won the game, though um, his edit left enough doubt in my mind that I'm like, hmm? Not so sure. I want to see how that jury reacts to him, uh, but turns out he would have had it. And I would have said congrats to him. Definitely. So since I knew that Julie had no shot, I'm like, okay, are you going to go for Gavin, who's had a fairly smooth ride, but lack of, oh yeah, this was a crowning achievement for me, because his crowning achievement, much as I hate to admit it, was... The fact that he never had his name written, written down the whole season, and it seems like that that honor is getting less and less um, respected as it goes along, because early in Survivor, it was very unusual for some, and respected, to have someone not have their name written down, like for the first eight seasons, okay? The only time every single person had the written, their names written down out of those two were, I mean, eight, was Amazon and All Stars. But, Rob Sesternino got to day 36 without his name getting written down, and then Boston Rob got to day 37 without his name getting written down. No. Yeah. Although, granted, Rob was immune for all but... Four tribals, two of which there was a 0% chance he was going home, so that's actually kind of think of it, not as big of a battle, whatever. Pass, Gold never got his name written down, he just drew the rock. Okay? But, yeah, there was always a note of honor for this person of sorts. Now, we've had uh, two seasons in a row where someone has made it to the end, without the names getting written down, and Mike from last season only got his name written down at the final five, and he got one vote. 
And now that's not really brought up anymore. That's a little bit depressing. So that's... Sorry, I totally didn't uh, finish that sentence. So you've got Gavin, as I've demonstrated. Oh, you've got Chris, who was out of the game for a while, but when he got back, oh man, did he play! And I couldn't really tell how that jury was going to go, because there were legitimate arguments to be made for and against these guys. Uh, because I put Gavin as a top pick for a reason, because I figured that Ron was going to get the boot eventually, and I look at Eric and I'm like, this guy has been way too invisible. It just does not feel right to put him as a top pick. Gavin, on the other hand, he reminds me of Nick. And he said one or two things that I think make me think that he could very easily come out there. And for the next couple episodes after that, he was doing stuff that made me go, right, I definitely chose the right guy. Sure enough, he makes it to the end, keeping the streak alive, because I'm going to do something that's really cheap. I'll freely admit and just say, those topics that I made in Kagayan, forget about it, because every time I've had a season where I felt that, huh, with making top picks, though the only time I've ever felt like that season after it was um, last season, David vs. Goliath. I don't do the top picks because I am so bamboozled that I can't do it. So if you eliminate the Kogayan top picks, every time I've done top picks, one of them always makes it to the end. So you can call me cheap. I give you 100% permission to do that, okay? Right. So I actually probably would have voted for um, Gavin just because um, I felt like on a, a critique basis it's way less controversial. We've seen this kind of um, gameplay there before. I agree it's not the most impressive thing Partially because he didn't get, um... Okay, it's not that he didn't get the greatest edit. Okay, the edit actually was justified in my picking of him and demonstrating his strengths at the end. Okay, the edit was fine. It was just the strength of the strengths, if that makes any sense. Just one enough, I guess, to um, get that jerk read and tons of them you know one decided but they ended up um selecting chris and um i fully understand it and again like with last season everything that the jury asked was honest and can you really say this is a bit of jury syndrome i don't really think so because Everybody seemed to agree with almost everything. Sure, those little bits and pieces that uh, change there, hence why um, Chris got it over Gavin. But I really do not think that you can say that this is the, um, uh, the most bitter jury. Sure, it's a very controversial decision, let me tell you and is really really close to um taking the spot as being most controversial jury decision in the history of survivor replacing um heroes vs villains though on the we watch i understand that jury decision a lot more now but that's because hvv gameplay is now the normal gameplay just about minus how crazy the voting blocks have been in a good amount of recent seasons um yeah, there's a part of me that doesn't like this, but there's a part of me that perfectly understands it. And, Chris, not a, a good game, I freely admit that, but outside of this game, if I could Fabio, I got nothing against the guy. Yeah, it wasn't smooth, but for Fabio it wasn't smooth for entirely different reasons. Although, if you ask me who's less of deserving between Chris and Fabio, I'm actually going to still argue Fabio, if you um, want to be honest, because you could definitely point to what Chris did in both of his appearances. Yeah, sure, Chris was voted out, but um, 
at least in one of the times where it worked out bad for him, he didn't actually, um, have to, um, do that. Like, he didn't have to give up his necklace, but he chose to give it up and, uh, take the risk as a way of proving it. And he didn't exactly say this, but he's like, I've been fighting for my life somehow the entire time I've been here. Might as well complete this. Oh, yeah, he, uh, played the idol for himself on day 30... Seven, but it could have backfired, and Lowen could have easily not played that idol for him, and it would have achieved the exact same result. But I just feel like that's better, because Fabio, if he had not won any of those last three immunities, pff, he's gone, and he was this close to being voted out at the final seven, and even when I was watching Benry rock down that path, I'm like... Okay, I understand why they did it, but why am I thinking that you should have done Fabio? I don't understand this. I really think you made a bad decision. Mm-hmm. Huh, bad move, Chase. Really bad move. Right. So... Yeah, I mean, like, I understand it, but there is a part of me that doesn't like this. And while this season was definitely um, easier for me to understand, I do agree with comments that um, Dalton, Ross, and Steven uh, made in their um, blogs. I didn't read Steven's blogs, but I was told about this in the reception for this season, where he argues that um, it was just a very lopsided bit, focusing too much on the attorneys, not giving enough credit to Chris, even when he got back in the game, because Rick got more, um, camera time and, um, was shunned, and, heck, Gavin, almost any other season, he would have had a somewhat better edit, and then you can understand it better as to why it didn't work out at the, um, end there, but I would definitely argue that, um, uh, Actually, do I want to say that? Okay, that doesn't make... I know that I just said I definitively would argue that Mike from last season had a stronger runner-up edit than Gavin, but now I'm not so sure about that after thinking about it. Uh, who knows, because this is really dragging on much longer than I think it deserves to um, go on. I'm really shocked that I've been talking for nearly uh, 20 minutes here. So... Oh, yeah, I didn't talk about the Edge of Extinction twist. Um, it wasn't the worst idea that the show has done, but after you turned it into Redemption Island 2.0, it just really defeats the purpose of it. Like, the jury does not have to be at Tribal Council. Set up a bleeding camera and tell them... The jury is watching on the other side, or don't even mention it the first time. Uh, just, uh... Oh, I don't get it with these people. I just do not get it with that issue. Well, they could have easily kept us a secret and didn't just run the challenge on them later on. It would have made it a lot more exciting and a lot more... Oh, for the gameplay, you know? Like, you don't have any problem not telling people anything when you introduce new things to the game, like the I don't know a fire, the extra vote, the steal a vote, but you have a problem with this? I don't get it. So it's not the worst idea, but don't tell the people about it until you have to, which is join the battle back. Okay? Because otherwise this is just Redemption Island, just except of duels, it's one. Honestly. Because, like, that's one reason why I'm actually not the biggest fan of Redemption Island now, because everyone knows exactly that it's there and who is there. So, it, yeah. When they did this in Survivor Israel, they didn't tell them. They didn't even tell them during the last duel. Come on. Right. 
Okay, so ranking of the season, as usual, um, look down. I wouldn't be too surprised if this is um, below Caramon, but make sure you uh, check down there to um, be sure. Especially since, as of when I'm recording this, I haven't even uploaded the Ghost Island um, reviews yet. <laughs> and uh, thoughts for next season... This is sort of borrowing from the South Africa Champions theme, although it doesn't seem like um, Rob or Sandra is going to cast a vote at the end, though I like the fact that they aren't actually playing the game, because you know they'll be kind of playing the game here, but... I don't have that much faith in this, to be honest, and yes, I've um, heard a thing or two about this season not being good, so that comes into um, play. Because I know that there's a controversial exit, but I have no clue who it was, okay? I'll tell you that much. We'll see.